Barbershop conversation, guys. I want to talk about this LeVar ball and developing his new league where he'll pay, he'll be the bridge for pe for kids who don't want to go to the NBA. I mean, who don't want to go to college, but have aspirations of going to the NBA. Now, I'm just going to talk about the outer semantics of this. I'm not going to, well, I'll, I'll touch on LeVar Ball in, in this, but I want everyone to understand the bigger, greatest picture. Whenever a minority, Mexican, Asian, Indian, but in this case, a black person wants to take a piece of the pie from white supremacy, from people in charge, from the good old boys clubs, they're going to send bad press. Now, they're going to say this is a terrible idea and they're going to put it on mainstream, right? They're going to give it to, um, they're going to send uh, moles into like the breakfast club, send moles into CNN, send moles into Revolt TV and talk about how bad of this is uh, LeVar Ball in terms of uh, creating this league. Now, this is one of the greatest ideas because it's just an idea now of 2017. I'm not talking about the uh, the implementation of it. I'm not talking about LeVar Ball being a CEO, manager. I'm not sure the, the logistics of how that league will be run. But the idea that a black kid from South Central LA who is a one and done kid can make $10,000 a month for his family for 10 months, that's $100,000. Versus going to college for one year. He's not going to graduate. He's a one and done kid. He is Kevin Durant. He is LeBron James. He is Kobe Bryant, Tracy McGrady, Kevin Garnett, et cetera, et cetera. Right. He is one of these type of kids who just goes Oh, those kids. Those guys went straight from high school. But I'm talking about. Oh, Kevin Durant was a one and done kid. Right. Uh, uh, Carmelo Anthony, who will not be attached to to the universally emotionally physically right part two they're going to say oh uh this college coach made him this co like john cal john calipari just i mean i'm not going to say what he does do because we i only see him when the lights are on but how what skills can they develop that can make that kid Bigger than a first round, bigger than a first pick of the draft, like a, uh, I mean, first top 10 pick, like a DeMarcus Cousins, Anthony Davis, John Wall, the list goes on and on. Now, if you have the gift of gab and you can get these kids in your uniform, that's spectacular. But let's talk about, it. there is not no optimum skill development taking place because keep in mind, these kids travel, these kids, I was a college athlete and I'm going to tell you this, it is secondary. When you in the mess hall and you talking shit, well, when I um, it was it was Mario Kart and Madden, right? Those were the two games where we fucking just killed it. The late '90s when I went to college, and a nigga talk shit in the mess hall, the cafeteria. I'm about to bust your ass in Madden. What? And it was college football too. NCAA 1997, 96, right? What? So we go from the mess hall to playing video games for three hours and go to practice at five o'clock, four o'clock, whenever the last class is. Right. And then we, we got to go fuck a girl or we got to go spend some time with a girl. And then we bullshit through an assignment and then we wake up the next morning and it's on repeat. We hit repeat when we wake up. And that's basically a collegiate athlete's life. Give or take a few moments. But for the most part, you hang, you go to class. Or you bullshit in class. You go to the mess hall. You talk shit. You have a break in between classes. Or you go to your, your after your 1 o'clock, your 120 class. And then you play video games. You wait for practice. You play video games. You talk shit on the phone. You go holler at a girl. Whatever you got to do in between. You go to practice. You come back. You take a shower. You go to a girl's room. Try and get some pussy. And then you move forward with your day. You go to bed. And then you work a little bit on your homework and shit. For the most part, that's what... Because through yourself, you know others. And these kids, these one and done kids will not graduate. They're going to they're going to uh, create so much revenue for the uh, for the university. These uh, these now keep in mind, here's a big part. These uh, 
advertising agencies will start going towards LeVar Balls if he gets these one-and-done kids. They won't be on CBS. They won't be on NBC, ESPN, Fox Sports. You guys understand what I'm saying? And for those of you who don't fully understand this, I want you guys to read a book. Mitch Album, Fab Five by Mitch Album. I read that book years ago. It is a phenomenal book. It tells a tale of the Fab Five from Michigan who they walk by they walk by the bookstore and they see their jersey on sale for seventy or a hundred dollars and they say they're not getting a dime of that. They they talk about the socks, the black socks that they created for they in, invented or made popular by Nike. I was wearing black socks when in the nineties. I and uh how popular they made how popular they made the baggy shorts and they didn't get a dime. Now if your outside of your family gives you money in college, that's a sanctioning fee. That's a fine. That's a that's a violation of your scholarship. So at the end of the day, great idea. I don't know if LeVar Ball can see it through because he's coming off a bit selfish a little bit, but his mind is in the right place. His actions, I am unsure of that. So, but I want everybody who hears this understand what the hell I'm saying. The idea of creating a revenue stream for a kid from South Central that is a one and done kid, a first round draft pick out of Washington High School in South Central LA. He can make $100,000 in one year and get the endorsement deals and be a celebrity and work around his own time and not worry about school, not worry about. John Calipari, making sure he shows up for class. You understand what I'm saying? So um, I think it's a great idea. Whether he can implement it, I am unsure of that. I'm going to root for him because um, I've, I've had the fortunate opportunity of spend time. I spent a great deal of time with um, all these kids out of L.A., the Russell Westbrooks, the... Uh, I spent a great deal of time with uh, Brandon Jennings. Spent a great deal of time with James Harden. Spent the, who I mean, so many kids who left early, who come out of L.A. Trevor Ariza, the Ariza family. Spent a lot of time with his mom. I mean, like a lot. Actually, I trained his mom. So, I mean, all them kids that came out of L.A. from like 2003 to like 2009, I've touched them, had a conversation with them, trained them. You guys understand what I'm saying? DeMar DeRozan. I spent two years with DeMar DeRozan. You know, like, I I, I seen DeMar go from uh, he and his family, uh, his dad is my neighbor, from going from uh, uh, zero to being a multi-millionaire. Ed, I mean, just to give you guys my background, Ed Pinckney, of the Minis- when he worked for the Minnesota Timberwolves, called me and was like, man, we're thinking about taking DeMar DeRozan. I said, you better take him. Because he is a, in my eyes at the time, I thought he was a second tier superstar and it will will grow into a second tier superstar in the NBA. You understand? Because you already had the LeBron James, the Dwayne Wade. I thought he would be a level below them just because there's no one better than LeBron James. There was no two guards better than uh, Dwayne Wade, Kobe Bryant. So I thought he was on the second level. You understand? I thought he would be, if he was in the NBA 15 years, I thought he would be a seven, eight time NBA All-Star, you know, borderline Hall of Famer. That's what that's how I envision uh DeMar DeRozan. And uh and uh and truth be told, that's kind of who he is now, right? Until these guys leave. But when they leave, he's gonna be 29, 30 years old and he can get another two hundred million dollar contract. So uh so I've touched these kids and I and I'm not speaking for them. I'm just gonna speak as a uh as just a normal conversation with their parents, you know that these kids are one and done kids. You know they're not they're not staying for their degree. So if so if Lavar Ball can implement this and be judicious and honest and forthcoming and be straight up and down with these people, it can be a great success. And if Lonzo Ball can be the cover guy for this, you know what I mean? Because Lonzo Ball comes off as a very believable person. I mean, you guys have seen him in the NBA. Very believable, very calm, very poised. His game is starting to flourish now. He's settling in in terms of his NBA and his expectancy of himself. And uh, so uh, I'm literally excited about We've got the ball rolling, right? We've got the ball rolling in terms of taking back what we want, taking back what we own, taking back. We are the entertainment of the Hollywood circle, right? 
or Robert Towns of the Hollywood. We are the entertainment of the Hollywood shuffle. You guys know what I'm saying? So anyways, man, have a great, hope you guys had a great holiday season. Um, I, I, I truly think you guys are amazing who follow and support me. Uh, and, uh, you know, I appreciate you guys. So let me know what you guys think. And uh, I'll be I'll be looking forward to reading you guys comments. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Peace.